There are also special problems we have to address in mobile networks as there are the hidden terminal problem and the exposed terminal problem. What does it mean in detail? First let's look at the hidden terminal problem. Imagine you have three stations and you have a certain communication range and you name the stations A, B and C, let's say. So from station A you could reach the station B. This is close enough. From station B you might reach station C and station A. These are close enough. And from station C you might also reach the station B. But it's not possible from reach from station A to reach station C, so the station A cannot hear what station C sends, and vice versa, the station C does not hear what station A sends, and the station C cannot therewith reach the station A. And if you see this scenario, you might say everything is okay when station B wants to send to transmit data to station A, let's say. Then a data packet is transmitted, data packet with an address in it and with some payload. And then also the station C receives this packet. But this is not the problem because station C sees that the address does not match the address of node C and therewith the package is discarded here in station C and only in station A the processing is done and the station A might also send an acknowledgement. So if the B starts sending then everything is okay. But now let's say that station A wants to send, wants to transmit the package to station B. It might happen that station C at the same time wants to send and therewith a collision would occur in station B and station B would not understand anything. Station A and station C do not see that the other station sends because station A cannot reach station C and vice versa. So a collision would occur in station B in the receiver of station B and station B therewith would receive nothing, nothing but two distorted messages. Now what can we do to address this problem? We can first let station A send a small package to station B. Only a small package and we call this package RTS. RTS means request to send. So station A basically requests that he might later on send some messages to B. Now if B actually is not busy with any communication with other nodes, then B replies with a CTS message. CTS means clear to send. And this signals the station A that station B is not busy and that station A now can send the actual bigger message here to node B from A to B. At the same time actually when node B sends the clear to send to node A, the clear to send is also transmitted to node C. The same clear to send because the radio wave propagation is in this model omnidirectional. So node A and node B will receive the CTS. And as the CTS is received in node C, the node C sees, okay, there comes a clear to send. What does it mean? I, the node C, did not send any request to send. So I did not request any communication. That's why this CTS is actually for another node, for node A. So, and the implication for node C is 
that there is now some back off time for node C. That means that node C should be quiet for a certain time frame. Because node C now knows the clear to send is the initiation of the node B communicating with another node. And if node C would actually send a message to node B during this quiet period, a collision of packets would probably happen in node B. And therefore node C has to be quiet for a certain time frame. After the time frame, the node C again is allowed to also initiate transmissions by sending an RTS message first. Then if node B is not busy, it sends a CTS and so on. So this is actually the scenario in our hidden terminal problem. The nodes A and C are hidden from each other and we use this transaction sequence with RTS and CTS to overcome this problem and to not let the packets collide in node B. Now of course it's still possible to have collisions, for example collisions of RTS messages. If you imagine that you have several more nodes here in the transmission range of node B and they all can transmit also to node B, they do not reach the node A but they might be able to send an RTS message to node A. Now with more nodes appearing here in this transmission range of node B, the probability that RTS messages occur from one of the other nodes is of course higher, because they might also have some messages to send and therewith also the collision probability might increase. Then the RTS message was, would collide at node B and the transmission of the CTS would not happen and there was the transmission of the bigger packet would also not happen. And now we have, now we might have an additional terminal, for example the terminal D. It's right beside the terminal C, but terminal D can only reach terminal C, node C is connected to node D. And now if you actually see this constellation, you might think that if there is a communication happening between node A and B, where node A is sending something to node B, then at the same time actually there could be some transmission from node D to node C. And this transmission would then not interfere with the transmission from A to B because the transmission range from D does only reach node C and therewith node B does not see what node D wants to transmit. Only node C can listen to the packets of node D. But what would actually happen if we now use again this RTS and C CTS package sequence. First the node A would send an RTS to node B. Then the node B would subsequently send a CTS to node A and at the same time also transmit the CTS to node C because the node C is in transmission range of node B. And then the node C actually has to be quiet, even though at the same time node D might make a transmission of an RTS to node C and C might be able to transmit a CTS to node D such that afterwards node D can regularly transmit the packets. But the CTS would not happen because node C first receives the CTS from node B and there is node C has to be quiet. Node C would not be allowed to transmit this CTS to node D and there is node D would think about node C that node C is not able to receive the packets. Actually the opposite is right. Node C in this case, in this constellation, would be able 
to receive packets from node D without any interference from other nodes. But node D does not receive this CTS and therewith does not start the transmission of the actual payload. This is the exposed terminal. That means that here in this constellation the transmission does not take place. The transmission from D to C does not take place at the same time like from A to B. So the actual exposed terminal is the terminal D here because this node is not able to transmit at the same time. It's exposed. It's somehow decoupled from the other nodes regarding its communication. So we can see that we have some specialties in wireless communication networks. For example, hidden terminal problem, exposed terminal problem. And therewith we have to architect our protocols, our communication behavior regarding to these challenges which we see here in our channel, in our medium, in our air resource which we would like to reuse for many, for several participants in our wireless network.